It's an 80 millimeter cutter with a 25.4 millimeter shank. Both these cutters were running a surface footage of 500 surface feet, a feed of 6006 6, per flute, and there are six flutes on this cutter, making it a speed of 636 RPM and a feed of 22.9 inches per minute. Again, both of these were the exact same cutters run under the exact same conditions. The chatter marks on the wall are created actually by the vibration due to the fact that there's non-spindle non contact or non-dual contact with the cutter itself. Um, these are actually the, the cutter flexing and coming back against the, the, the workpiece and you can see that that's almost like a serrated edge. This is the dual drive cut, showing less serration and less tool marks, the overall smoother cutting. Okay, we're comparing the finished surface finish. The front side was the standard holders, and the back half was with the dual drive tool holder. Even from a distance, you can see that the front half is more coarse grained in appearance. And as I zoom in, you can get a better look at that. The difference between the dual drive and the standard holder here is right through the middle of the picture, the standard holder being the bottom half. And now I'm going to bring the camera around to the side, give you a better shot of that from a different angle. It catches the light. This is the front of the block, and you can see the marks on the surface left by the standard tool holder. Now here is, here is the back of the block, and this is the dual drive tooth marks. You can see the swirls are there, but when you compare them to the front of the block, there's a significant difference in the surface finish. And this is, of course, a good indicator of the difference in the cut, the rigidity of the tool holder, and also the wear that is affecting the tool life on the inserts. Clearly the dual drive is giving us better results.